Hey, so right now I want to show you something that actually blew my mind. Today what we're going to do is build a set of programmatic SEO pages, just like DoorDash is here, except all built with no code tools and chat GPT-3. So all the content will be basically written by OpenAI. All of the pages will be built with no code. And this is literally something that a couple of years ago would have taken a team of engineers, designers, and content marketers weeks, if not months to build. Uh, we're gonna do this in just a few minutes. So just to give a little background here, this is a SEO page that DoorDash has made. So if you go to Google, and just to show an example here, and you search food delivery in New York, there's a bunch of ads, but if you scroll down below that, you've got a SEO page by Grubhub and then one by DoorDash. And this DoorDash page is basically programmatically adding the city name here for food delivery, same with here, and then showing a bunch of restaurants what we'll do is build one for our fictional food delivery service Chomp that looks like this. So food delivery in New York, it actually goes one step further than DoorDash, which is it includes a little bit of AI written content that's specific to New York. So right here talking about the very best of the Big Apple. And then if you scroll below that, we'll list some restaurants here that again are specific to New York. And just to give you a a little preview of some of these other versions, right? We can look at Dallas, same idea, or Los Angeles, right? And again, all of this content personalized to the city. The way that we'll do this is, and just to give a quick overview of how it all is set up, is we have all of this data in an Airtable base. So I've included 22 cities here. Again, theoretically, this will work with 1,000 or 10,000 cities. Each of those cities are linked to restaurants. So we have the second restaurants table here, which has, you know, all these restaurants, the city they're in and their image, as well as a URL. And finally, we've got a short description. So this is this sentence here, which is specific to the city and then written by AI. So all of this here is connected through WhaleSync. WhaleSync is taking the data that's in their table and syncing it into Webflow. For display. I'm going to go ahead and walk you through each of the steps that we took to get to this spot. All right, so let's start with Webflow. Now, Webflow has a bunch of really great templates. So for whatever programmatic pages you need, you can probably find something. For us, let's use this one called Chomp, which is perfectly built just like DoorDash or Breeds for a food delivery service. So here you can just click use for free. What that's going to do is create a website like this in your Webflow account. The first thing we want to do is come into the CMS and create two collections. So one for locations. So this is going to hold New York and Seattle and every other city that we want to create a page for programmatically. And then one for restaurants, which will have all the restaurants in those cities linked together. In that locations collection, just go into settings and we're going to add two fields here. So one uh, short description and then and secondly, a restaurants field, which is going to reference the restaurants collection. Over on the restaurant side, also just two fields, an image and a URL. And that way we can show a nice little image of each restaurant and link out to that restaurant's page. Once you've set up those collections, you'll notice in the pages, a section, a restaurant's template and a locations template. Let's work off the locations template for these programmatic pages. And basically anything on this page, you can make programmatic. It's gonna start with, you know, by default, just some uh, static text, but because of Webflow, what you can do is go into settings and then get text from and then fill that in with any of the fields that we just put in our collection. Just for the sake of this example, I'm not gonna go through and do every single piece of content on this page, but instead we're gonna focus on this H1 and then this subparagraph. And so for the paragraph, again, you can just go to settings, get text from locations, and then uh, set it to short description. And for the H1, what we're gonna do is use an HTML embed. And so this gives us a little bit more control over what it is that is dynamic. For us, we just want this New York City part of the sentence to be dynamic. We don't care about the rest. And that's why an HTML embed works really well. And so you can hit plus over here, grab this embed element. It'll pop this over here. And in settings, we can add a little bit of HTML. So for H1s, we'll just put it like this. Add in our, our text that we want, food delivery, and then name here, right, is the dynamic piece. We do that by adding a field. And so just to kind of create this from scratch so you can see it again, Let's add another one. We'll do embed. Let's do an H2 this time and say, this is an example H2. The city is, and then add field name. And we can close that out. 
save and close. And there we go. This is an example H2, the city is New York. So I'll delete that for now. That's the basics of Webflow. Now let's take a look at Airtable. So over on the Airtable side, we're gonna create two tables. They're gonna match the CMS collections that we just created in Webflow. So we've got a locations table and a restaurants table. And each of these tables will have uh, the same fields that we have in Webflow, right? So a name and a short description in our locations, right? And just to show that back in Webflow, locations, uh, settings, right? We've got name, slug, short description, and that will be enough to get started. We're also gonna need to add two extra fields. So one here is name for API. I'll show in a little bit, but we're gonna use a data fetcher to pull the data into this restaurant table. So we need that for this field for that. And then prompt. So this is what we're actually gonna be sending to OpenAI's AI writing tool to generate a short description for us. So those are our fields over here in locations. Over on the restaurant side, we'll also want to name um, the image URL um, and the actual URL. Again, just mirroring what we have in Webflow. And then we'll need to make a linked record over to locations here so that we can associate each of these uh, restaurants with a specific city. All right, so that's how you set up Airtable. But let's talk about how we actually get this data into Airtable. So again, we've got 22 records for restaurants here. Let's, you know, obviously it would take forever to, to write this you know, one by one, especially for hundreds of restaurants. So instead what I'm gonna do is use a tool called Data Fetcher. So to show how that works, let's just delete the restaurants we have here to start. And I've put a couple cities here. So LA, Chicago, Houston, right? You can fill in these 20 cities by hand. You could also use something programmatic for this too. But to start, let's just start with these 20 that I put in. And over on the restaurant side, we're gonna use something called Data Fetcher. So an Airtable, that's an extension. And just to kind of show, let's exit that, just to show what that looks like. If you click Add Extension and search for Data Fetcher, it looks something like this. So over on Data Fetcher, you're gonna do a Create a Request. What this allows us to do is use any of these tools that they integrate with to pull data into Airtable, or alternatively, use a custom API call to pull data into Airtable, really from any API. And so for restaurants, a uh, very natural place to go is the Yelp API. So you can take a look at how to create a Yelp account, but it's really easy. Once you have, it'll give you an API key and you can actually start to use this, these docs. Again, I'm not a developer. You don't have to be a developer to use these docs. Um, I'm gonna show you really easily how you can get this going. But basically here, what DataFetcher is doing is it needs to create an API request to get that data. And so we're looking to make a get call, so to get information from Yelp. And so over in Yelp, we can take a look at which of these get calls we want. For us, we're searching for businesses, we're searching for restaurants. So that's the, the call we want. They have a bunch of different APIs that you can use, right? About checkout and other things that we don't need for this. Um, reviews, right? So let's focus on this search businesses call. Here, the only thing that you really need to take a look at is this example request, right? So what's happening, this is the code version here that um, we need to just extract the pieces of the pieces of it that we need and put it into data fetcher. So first of all is a URL. So let's grab this URL here and copy it and come back over to data fetcher and paste it in. What data fetcher has done is it's taken uh, some of the parameters here. So the sort by and the limit and just pulled it out into its own little section here, which is really nice. So that's great. Actually, and let's let's add, we don't want to just search for all restaurants. We want to search in a specific space. So let's do New York, right? So let's copy that one more time and try that again. And there we go. Cool. Okay. Now we don't actually want to just grab just restaurants from New York. We want it to be dynamic and look up the restaurant each location. So here, instead of New York, we're actually gonna do a value. And in the uh, restaurants table, we've got, uh, or rather in that locations table, we've got a field called name for API. This is why we've created this, uh, this field, right? Because for Los Angeles, Chicago, Houston, all these different cities, we need to send that to Yelp and make sure that it can you know, send us back the right restaurants. Here we have a limit of 20. Let's just pop this down to two just to make this run a little quicker. And over in advanced settings, I'm gonna make sure this is on update um, so it doesn't just add new records, but also updates them. So let's save and run this. Oh, continue, this will probably, yeah. Okay, so this is gonna throw an error. What you'll also need to do is make sure you're authorized. So the last piece here after 
parameters um, is authorization. If we come back and take a look at the ELP API, you'll notice here a header with authorization and specifically authorization, authorization bearer. And so back over in data fetcher, you'll notice a type bearer token is the one for, for Yelp. We'll just need to set this as token over here. We've got our API key. Let's be a little more careful, careful here and grab that like this. Okay, cool. We've got our token, we've set that, and let's also just do one more, which is headers. You'll notice, again, one more thing here, which is we need to accept and then application JSON. So let's pop that in, accept. Make sure I didn't forget that in there. There we go. Cool. So now when we save and run this, this should actually work. And there we go. What Data Fetcher is doing is it's making a call to Yelp. It's grabbing the information we need, and now it's asking us to tell us which fields in our table to put that information. And so we want to make sure that this gets put in the right place. So let's take business name. We actually want that to be an existing field, and so that'll be name. Same for a couple of these. Oops, let's do business image URL. I think we got one for that. Alias, do we have one there? No, we have. We can leave that as a new field. Actually, we don't even need ID or alias or whether it's closed or not, right? There's just a couple of these that we do want. A key one that we do want to make sure we get is the city. So business location city, we got to make sure that that goes into our location linked because this is going to create the linked record over to our locations table. I think we're all good there. So we map those fields. Let's save and run. And this will take a minute here while it goes through. Perfect. Okay, so that ran. Let's take a look at the output table and Let's close that out just so we can see. And there we go. So it's automatically pulled all that data and created it in this, this uh, database here. It linked it uh, to the city. And if we come back over to locations, we've got that right here. So let's say for Austin, right? A bunch of really cool different places. Okay, cool. So just a quick review of where we're at. We've got an Airtable base with all the cities for which we're gonna create programmatic pages. We've got another Airtable table with all of the restaurants that we're gonna display on those pages linked to each one of those cities. That data is being pulled by data fed via the Yelp API. And so now the last piece here before we start to get these pages actually created is to fill in this short description. And basically what we're gonna do here is create a prompt that is dynamic using an Airtable formula. So this formula is going to tell OpenAPI what we want its AI system to, to create, but fill in the name of each individual city, right? So if we take a look at, let's say, Chicago, we're going to tell OpenAPI to write an SEO description that is local and specific to Chicago. So to actually get this sent to OpenAPI, we're gonna use Zapier. Zapier just released a connector to OpenAPI, so you can do really cool stuff with it now. The first thing we're gonna do is just set up a simple trigger here on new records. So every time you add a new record to Airtable, so in the form of a new city, that's going to trigger this. The action is to send a prompt to OpenAPI. So let's set up that action. Basically, we're going to tell OpenAPI to use this prompt short description field, right? So this field right here, prompt short description, and basically it will turn out a result. So if we take a look at test action here, it's turning the prompt that we gave it into this actual description that's specific to San Diego. And the last step, again, if you're familiar with Zapier, this shouldn't be too complicated here, is to just update the record in Airtable. So we're gonna basically go back into our database, look at the table locations, and then take the record that we grabbed in this first trigger and update it using the text from, uh, from, from OpenAPI. So that is the extent of this zap. Let's go ahead and publish it and turn this on. Perfect, okay, so this is on. Let's go to the zap. And just to go ahead and run this, there's a demo. Let's look at the details here and let's click run manually. So like, let's, let's just get this thing going to, so you can see how this works. It's gonna look for new items and then once it finds them, it's gonna start to fill them out. So this is all Zapier, talking to open AI, using the prompt that we created here and then filling out our data in our Airtable base. And once this is done, we have everything we need to create programmatic pages. We've got Webflow to display the data, 
you've got all the data for each of these pages in Airtable in the space. And the last step is just actually connecting Airtable and Webflow so that what is here in this Airtable base can actually be on a live website. And the tool to do that is WellSync. So this is our tool. It's perfect for this exact situation where you're going to come in, hit create new, go through and connect to Airtable and connect to Webflow. So let's just do that really quickly. So let's authorize with Airtable. We're going to use an API key and what is called a base sharing link. So if we go to share, we're going to turn this on and copy that. So now we're authorized against Airtable. We'll save that. Same idea for Webflow. Let's just go ahead and authorize. With this, it's even easier. We can just grab a chomp here and authorize. And now we're connected to our two tools. So once we've connected, all we need to do is map the data that's in the Airtable to the data that's in Webflow. If you remember from earlier in the video, we've created the locations and restaurants table in Airtable. That's just gonna map right over to the same collections over in Webflow. Once we've mapped those two tables, we're gonna do the same thing with each of the fields. So the same ones we've been talking about, name, restaurant, short description over in the locations table, that's gonna map as well as business image URL, business URL and name. And again, just looking at it over an Airtable, we're just taking these two tables and telling WellSync that I want them to sync to the two collections in Webflow and same idea for each of these individual fields. Over here, we can also set the sync direction. For the sake of this, we really only need to go one way from Airtable to Webflow, but let's keep it two way just in case we ever do wanna make updates over on the Webflow side. Once we're done mapping, we can save that base and we can turn sync on. This in WellSync will start to initialize and then count up all the updates that it's ready to make and then start to count them down as those updates get synced into Webflow. So once this is done syncing, this updates will go to zero, right? You'll see nothing here. And all the data that is in Airtable will sync over into Webflow. So we'll have those locations and each of those locations will have short descriptions. Um, again, whatever is in here will have synced over into Webflow. And there we go. That will include all the restaurants, right, that we've created and linked. And now that they're in Webflow, they're in the CMS, they're going to show up on those dynamic pages. So if we come back over to our locations template, right, we now have one for all of our different cities. And you can kind of click through, pretty cool, and see all of these different cities, right, with <laughs> these little changes here, both in the city, but as well as the description there as well. And if you scroll down, because we have that linked record over the restaurants table, it's going to show a different restaurant for what's in Indianapolis versus, let's say, something in Austin, probably barbecue. Yeah, cool. It's a barbecue there. So that's really it. Again, this is something that would have taken a developer, a designer, a content marketer weeks to set this up, really like not that long ago. And now... We've done this now in about half an hour. I can literally publish this site and have a programmatic page for as many of these cities as I want. And you can start to play around with things, right? So if let's say you think this Austin one isn't quite what you want, right? For whatever reason, you can come back into this Airtable base and mess around with this prompt and OpenAI will write something new for you. If you want to add a thousand more cities, you can do the same thing in Airtable or same thing in Data Fetcher to grab more and more restaurants. So. I hope that was helpful. Check this out. It's really, really powerful. WellSync makes it really easy to take anything that's in our table and sync it two-way into Webflow, programmatic SEO being just an awesome use case for that.